everyone in this video I'm going to tell you about the most messed up camping trip I have ever experienced I'm home now so I will just be telling you what happened but I did record a lot of it it's just I didn't make the complete video out there because halfway through I was thinking who would want to watch this this is so messed up but then when I came home I was like well this could still serve as advice for somebody something to look out for or some things to consider honestly I still don't really know what went wrong so this trip was going to be a trip with the least amount of camping gear possible like super minimal I have actually done this already twice when I camped without a tent of course I also had the sled and I packed up my two doggies also and Misha and Zima stayed home and I got my new truck this was the first time that I was gonna take him out it's a him it's a boy <laughs> I was gonna take him out to um, an adventure so we went up to Shaver Lake the roads were great and I ended up at the spot where I hunted and I had my trailer there I also went there once just a couple of months ago when I had my tent and my wood-burning stove and I was there for a couple of nights it was wonderful so I know the area hi doggies you're here are you excited I am okay here we go let's load this sled up and then find our campsite so hang on so things went wrong right at the beginning. I pack up the sled, all the camping gear fit on it, and it was actually not too high and not even heavy. And then I have my doggies all, you know, hooked up and everything, and they would not do it. They tried for like a few steps, and then they just sat and didn't care. Come on, doggies. Come on, let's go. What's going on? How come you guys don't want to come? Misha, also, come on. Oh, these dogs are on strike. What is going on? It's not even that heavy to pull. The snow is deep, but I don't know. Come on, doggies. Guess who's pulling the sled? It's me. The dogs would just not do it. So thanks a lot, dogs. I ended up pulling it myself and it was it was very hard because it was on top of the snow and the snow wasn't quite strong enough to hold it up. It kind of fell into the rut. It was a lot of work. If it was just on the ground, Misha, it would actually be pretty easy. Helping. So a sled is still a good thing to have even if you have no dogs in the winter. I think it's very, very important Ow. to have Ow. if you're going to go oh camping God. in the snow. So anyways, we made three trips because the two other trips had to have the firewood. I was going to have a nice fire, you know, for many hours in the night and then also a fire in the morning. This is our third and last load. It is a lot of hard work. Um, the snow is knee deep and it's super hard to even walk and then actually pull the uh the sled and no wonder the dogs couldn't do it i actually <laughs> don't blame them i'm not mad at them and then it started raining it was not supposed to rain i couldn't believe it it was just kind of sprinkling it wasn't heavy rain but it was constant so i had to hurry up i had to make sure everything is covered with the tarp and I shoveled some snow to make sure I have a nice area. I put up the tarp, I put the cot, I set it up, I put my sleeping bag on it. I even had the tarp down and the blanket for the doggies. I made fire. I'm like, okay, it's gonna get dark soon. We could have dinner and just enjoy it and then just start exploring a little bit. And then I noticed that it was getting wet. My cot, my sleeping bag, the dog's blanket, it was getting wet, like as if it was rained on. And I go, how is this possible? There's a tarp above it. The tarp covered the cot and most of the blanket and the, the dog's area. And I'm looking, and I'm looking up at the tarp. I'm like, there's no holes in it. It's a brand new tarp I just bought. There's no wind, so the rain is not falling sideways. And I was just watching it getting wetter and wetter and I decided 
decided that we can't sleep there. I mean, you can have the best sleeping bag, but if it gets wet, oh my God, you're gonna be so miserable. I just couldn't believe it. So after all that work, I decided we're just gonna have to sleep in the truck. So I fed the doggies, so it's less things to take. I grabbed my backpack and I just put my dehydrated food in the bag, my one spoon and my, and my one cup. And luckily I had a backup plan. I haven't actually mentioned it. I had this little stove that I got from Dragoon Unlimited. It's like this tiny, the whole thing can fit in your hand. You open it up and it opens up so big you could actually put um, even a frying pan on it. So I took that and I took the little jet boil fuel and my lighter and my jacket and my sleeping bag. So I just packed up everything. We went, I put the fire out, we went back to the truck. I put the doggies in the crate, in the truck. At first I felt bad. I'm like, wow, they're gonna sleep outside, poor doggies. But then I was like, well, they were gonna sleep outside anyways on the ground. And now they are in a crate. There's another small blanket in there and they're in the inside of the bed of the truck. And this truck is even deeper. So they're actually not even gonna be cold. And they're German, the German shepherds, they're used to the cold. So I made my dinner. It was, it was awesome. It was perfect. Like this stove, you gotta have, you never know. It's absolutely lightweight. It can fit anywhere. You could clip it on your backpack. You could just always have it. And I took the cup too, the little metal cup. I boiled my water. That's how I had dinner. I had some tea, it was perfect. And then I put my sleeping bag in the back of my truck, like behind my front seat. And I'm about 5'8", I think it's about five feet, six inches or seven inches. So it was almost perfect. I kind of laid sideways and um, you know, then I could kind of be straight. Honestly, it was very, very uncomfortable because I cannot sleep on anything hard like that. So I kept tossing and turning, but that sleeping bag held up one more time. It was warm. I was definitely not cold. And I had just, I had my pajamas with me too. I, so I just had a t-shirt and my um, pajama pants. And I was thinking, man, what a messed up trip. But at the same time, I was like, well, a messed up camping trip is still better than staying at home. I still did not regret doing that because if I would have stayed home, I would have been like, oh my God, this is weekend number three. This is just too much. So the morning came and it was beautiful as always. With, I love the snow. So we get out and we go back to the campsite. I go, okay, well, let's pack up and let's just go home. Forget the breakfast. I'm just like ready to go home. Like this was a fail. So we go back to the campsite and everything that was getting wet, it was covered in snow. I couldn't believe it. It wasn't like really, you know, layers and layers of snow, but that was one layer of snow completely, as you could see. And I was thinking if I slept here, I would have been rained on, snowed on. That sleeping bag would not have mattered because it's not going to insulate you if it's completely soaked like that. And it's just absolutely crazy. I don't know what happened. So maybe you could tell me, give me some advice. The only thing I have heard from actually two people that it was the moisture in the air that just sort of settled, but I don't know. I guess I'm not that good with science or anything, but that doesn't really make that much sense to me. I mean, I guess it could happen, but it never happened before. Everything was completely dry. And once I even slept without a tarp my very first time, that was absolutely no problem. So I really don't know. I guess in the future I would need um, more tarp because this one was kind of like above me, but it kind of went like this a little bit. So I guess maybe I need a tarp like, like a house. I need two tarps or more or something bigger. I don't know, but this was it. This was actually, I can't say it was fun, but it was very interesting. A camping trip is either going to be fun or it's going to be a lesson. So it was definitely a lesson. So 
hopefully this can serve you as some kind of a warning that this could happen. And if you have any advice, please let me know. I am completely heartbroken to tell you that after editing this much of the video and I was about to upload it, is that my favorite doggy, also my oldest one, got sick and he was sick for six days and then he passed away on March 30th, 2020. He just uh, stopped eating and he was extremely lethargic, just super tired. And I took him to two vets to um, do all kinds of testing, x-rays and everything. And they did not know question. what was going on yeah, with him. Right. This here was his very last walk. He My took a couple of walks so with me to the mailbox or just around the sweetie. corner of the house. And this one was the last. This was the day before he passed mm -hmm. away or maybe two days before. And he That's only cool. made it out to the house, to the front of the house, and then he laid down and and he just wouldn't go anymore. And he was just so sick. And this doggy has been with me since 2013, almost seven years. And I got him from a shelter and he was a true outdoor dog. He always went with me on every camping adventure, hunting. Anywhere I went, he was with me, and he was just such a good dog. He was a huge, big male dog, but he was so mellow and so well-behaved and so passive. He was just such a great dog. He was also super protective of me, but he wasn't insecure about anything, so he wasn't barking if there was no reason. He got along great with his two little sisters, Misha and Zima. And I am just super, super sad, obviously. So that was one thing I wanted to upload this video for like a few days. I was like, you know what? Never mind. I don't care. I don't care about anything. But I thought that this was his very last camping trip, even though it was messed up, but it was his last trip. So this is like one more thing I can do just um put him up there so so this is my also